Now, without further ado, we will turn it over to Tom. Thanks, Marguerite, and I apologize. I might have had my finger on the mute oh. button there uh, for the first minute, but just for, for folks on the, on the webinar that didn't hear, we'll, we'll provide all the material uh, after the fact, and we also will have video links as well um, that folks can, uh, can do the recording uh, if they need to view it at their own time. Um, thanks, Marguerite, and, and welcome. Uh, my, again, my name is Tom Maida. I'm the Director of Product Management for Transition Manager Software Business Unit at, at TDS. Um, and I also run our, our cloud operations team uh, that delivers Transition Manager as SaaS. Um, with me is Steve Malloy. He is our uh, principal uh, migration consultant at TDS, and, and Steve can, can bring that, that field experience that we have uh, with these large uh, transformation and cloud migration projects. And Steve, can you just say hello so folks can hear your voice? And... Hi, everyone. Steve Malloy. Thanks, Steve. All right. Well, let's just get into it. All right, a little bit about TDS before we get started. Um, you can find us in the Gartner Market Guide for IT Resiliency Orchestration. You can go to our website at transitionaldata.com and you can view that material from 2017 and 2018. We were also named a cool vendor in 2015 as well for our data center transformation services. We provide Transition Manager software, uh, which I will demonstrate today, as an on-premise installation, or as I mentioned earlier, as SaaS. We also provide enabling services to accelerate the adoption of Transition Manager for your migration practice, as well as turnkey migration services led by my colleague Steve um, out of our delivery business unit. The tiles on the right of the slide just give you a sense of the, the verticals that we've played in. Um, you see financial, healthcare, and, and health sciences as well. So we, we've had the software embedded uh, in these large industries and, and maintained uh, these large transformation uh, objectives for these clients. And so we'll just jump right into uh, market challenges and then we'll do a bit of a transition manager demo to get you centered on, on our product. So market challenges, the biggest blocker uh, that we see in, in cloud migration projects, you know, app rationalization uh, type initiatives is the data that you need to be successful, um, key resources don't have access to it. Or even worse, it's stuck in people's heads or in one-off spreadsheets. And if you look at the left-hand side of the slide, it's stuck in these siloed tools. Um, and what you end up with is a, a, a uncentralized data set that isn't normalized, that, that isn't deduplicated or cleansed. And every time, you try, every time you try to make a decision, you have to keep re-correlating the data and re-collating it again um, just to make sure that you're confident that you're making the right one. So that's a huge blocker uh, that we see out in the field today. Uh, to compound that problem, you have these tools on the right, uh, think workload migration tools, uh, data protection type tools, um, any automation orchestration tools. They need to be told what to do and, and when to do it. And if, you're, if you don't have a great data set to do that planning from, then you're not going to get the value out of these tools either. So this is why we built and continue to extend Transition Manager. Uh, Transition Manager is a platform to plan, orchestrate, and automate transformation projects such as cloud migration, data center modernization, or a hybrid of both, right? We can ingest data from the multiple sources of truth that you will find at an enterprise and aggregate it all into one flat platform to create an actionable data set very quickly. Uh, Transition Manager then provides you the tools to properly segment your environment and break it down into smaller worker, workable units, and we'll, we'll walk through that a bit in the demo. Um, you can then take that great planning that you've done, and you can transform your assets uh, from you know, migrating to cloud or, or migrating to a new private cloud with our automated runbook capability um, that, that can, you can create this mixtured workflow that has the right mixture of API automation and integration, as well as wired in human checkpoints uh, to make sure that you're on track and getting done what you need to get done at the right time. 
This slide depicts a, a typical user workflow when you're using Transition Manager. Um, you'll start on the left here with data aggregation, and I'll walk you through some of our features and, and how we enable that data aggregation process, and we get you that environment map really, really fast. Um, then on to segmentation and planning. This is where you're taking, uh, you know, have a big map of your environment, your assets, and your dependencies, and you're breaking it down into smallable, workable units based on your use case, and I'll show you examples of that as well. And last but not least, you can take that great planning that you've done and do parallel and phased execution. Think, you know, easy to move workloads, you know, getting them to where they need to go first, and at the same time, uh, you have a work stream where you're working on the more complex applications that have that did require deep dependency analysis and, and interviews with folks that are subject matter experts to get those workloads moved. All right. So enough slideware, um, and we'll jump right into the demo. So just give, bear with me one second here. While I share out another application. Excuse me, my, uh, my laptop here was making some uh, funky display things here, so I didn't want to share those with you. Um, all right, so here we go. So here's Transition Manager. So we're talking about data aggregation and creating that actionable data set first. Uh, this is our, our, our sample data ingestion screen. And enterprise IT organizations, they have the data they need to execute on cloud migration projects or they're getting little value out of the data because, again, it's stuck in disparate locations, there's too much of it, and they, and they can't pull it together fast enough to make a good decision quickly. Um, in Transition Manager, our customers use our data ingestion and ETL script capability where they can automatically grab the most valuable data points from these sources of truth. So CMDBs uh, may be trustworthy for, for certain attributes. Um, RV tools and virtual center, they're, they're great sources of truth for my VMware source infrastructure. Um, NetFlow type tools are great at cataloging network connectivity and, and trying to build dependency maps. With Transition Manager, we can go get the valuable data points from these source solutions and aggregate them all in one place uh, so you can get uh, to an actual data set extremely quickly. Um, and how we do that, you can do it in a couple ways. Uh, we can go get the data from an external system via API. Uh, this system has some example configurations uh, reaching out to Cloudscape Auto Discovery to pull data in uh, to a ServiceNow CMDB or our VMware's version of Auto Discovery uh, vRealize Network Insight. Uh, you could fetch that, the data over API, and then we could iterate over that with an ETL script. And what these ETL scripts are is we can ship these with the product, and, and they're essentially import templates. So, you know, think, uh, you know, JIRA for, for workflow, uh, CMDBs like Atrium and Surewell. Um, you'll also see uh, auto discovery tooling as well out here. With these importers, we can pull those valuable data sources in fast. And the good news is, is they don't require any development cycles uh, to get these into the product. Um, you know, we, uh, Transition Manager is used at, at many large migration practices, and they'll take our Cloudscape ingestion template as we have it out of the box. It gets them 95% of the way there, but they might want to see a dependency relationship or something a little bit different, and they can tweak it themselves. They don't, they don't have to go to TDS, and we don't have to go into a development sprint cycle to turn these out, so it's very fast. For this example, though, I'll just do a file upload of RV tools. And for those of you that may not be familiar with RV Tools, it's, it's simply a, a database extract of your vCenter environment um, for your virtual center source systems. So I'll upload that here to the system. And then I'm going to apply my ETL script to it, my RV Tools 5.0 version, and I'll transform it. What the transformation is doing is it's normalizing, it's putting things in terms that everybody understands, it's getting rid of the noise. And it's also creating uh, that relational data set, um, all your assets and all your dependencies that can be found in this source system. And I'll go ahead and post that. And what you'll see in the result table here is, is what it created. It, it created 10 application records. 
these are my vCenter clusters that are in my source data center. It created 503 devices. Uh, these are the VMs that are running on those clusters, as well as the physical hardware that's propping up those virtual center environments. And I also created interdependencies between the applications, the hardware, and the VMs, right? This VM runs on this cluster. Um, this cluster is, is propped up by these six physical servers. So you get a sense that we're not just creating an asset inventory on the fly, we're creating an asset inventory plus the appropriate interrelationships that are required for our use case. And typically what we'll, we'll see, and, and, and hopefully Steve can confirm for me, is in the field, we see about three to five sources of truth, right? Your CMDBs, your auto discovery tools, a special spreadsheet that, that Mr. Admin keeps on his desktop. We can pull that all in together and in, into one place. And what you end up with is this, this complete map, right? This galaxy shot of your environment where you get to that, that jumping off point with confidence saying, all right, I have what I need here. I can start looking at my landscape and finding uh, easy to move workloads to the cloud or figuring out where I have duplication and redundancy. I can retire some other things. You can launch with confidence and everybody's looking at the same place. They're all in transition manager. They're not in their tool of choice trying to make the same decision. And, you know, I would describe this map as a data enriched map. So ingestion from sources of truth and ETL, that, that will get you 75, 85% of the way there if you're trying to move a really complex workload, let's say, from source to target. Um, but to get a more complete picture, you, you also may need to talk to people, right? Uh, you'll have to have subject matter expert conversations and Transition Manager provides a very flexible data platform. We can we can customize any kind of data coming in with custom fields and lists, and, and we can layer on the non-discoverable facts as well, not just the data that you're going to find that these tools are spitting out. So you really get that complete, um, enriched picture. Okay. So the Galaxy picture shot is cool. You know, most of our customers have never seen that before. It's a, it's a nice aha moment. However, it's not really usable, right? You, you have to break this big map down uh, into smaller segments uh, so you can start making progress and move the needle. And there's a couple ways that you can do that in Transition Manager. Uh, one way is through our, our save view process and, 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 and making determinations empirically, right? Um, so I created a review, a, a save view called Highly Mobile Rehost. And you'll find in most large enterprises, there's going to be the, these workloads that are, are, are easier to move and, and lift and shift to the cloud with your tool of choice. It could be a river meadow type tool. It could be a, a carbonite migrate, uh, think cloud endure, or a VMware HCX, right? That type of uh, workload transformation tooling that can take that workload from source to target uh, and do the work in between that it takes to get it there. And with this save view, uh, based on criteria that I defined in the view, uh, I'm looking for a particular type of hypervisor. I'm looking for a hypervisor with a version greater than 5.0. Uh, I'm looking for, for dev test, non-prod workloads. And, and even cooler, I, I'm looking for workloads that have a very low blast radius, right? They have a, a very few interdependencies. Another example you might see, some of our partners, they like, they like to calculate total ingress and egress. Uh, network throughput that are coming into these workloads, and they think, hey, if, if this thing's doing a certain you know, amount of in and out, there's not much going on here. Maybe it's not that important, so it's, a, it's an easy workload to find to move to the cloud. So you can find these workloads empirically, and you can tag them, and I tag these here with a rehost tag, and I think that I got about 25 of 349 that were identified, and I've created my first segment, right? So I had this big map over here, and through uh, data attributes, I'm able to start breaking it down into smaller pieces where I can start making progress on these rehostable workloads and getting them to the cloud fast, right? So once I've tagged these workloads, if we also, uh, we can then start using our, our cookbook technology, our, our, our recipe technology, to start building templates to migrate these workloads to the cloud. 
each one of these lines in here uh, is, is what we call a recipe, and, and a recipe is a templatized workflow, you know, based on a use case uh, to, to migrate uh, something from source to target. Um, so we were talking about rehostable type workloads, right? So I have a line in here called rehost mobile, uh, my temple size workflow, and you can see at the bottom that it's associated with my rehost tag. So anything tagged with the rehost tag is going to be in scope for this template. And what you can do is you can generate tasks, and I'll show you the result. And what it's going to do is it's going to create this workflow to get these workloads moved from source data center to the cloud. So if I go to the task graph here, you can see each line in here represents a, a workflow for the 25 workloads that I need to get to, from source to target. And in this particular example, uh, I'm using a tool uh, called HCX uh, to migrate from my source physical data center uh, to VMC cloud uh, on AWS. And I highlighted the HCS tasks, uh, HCX tasks uh, that are part of this workflow. And, and what I'm trying to demonstrate here is the red items are automated items. So this task of protecting this VM with the HCX product is not a task for a human to do. It's associated with an API method that's available within Transition Manager. And with my recipe template, I can generate a task and say, hey, go, go touch HCX, protect this workload in the cloud, because I want to move it there. Um, the arrows are important too. We have uh, firm success, uh, predecessor successor logic. So when this task becomes blue, it's completed, and only then will this next task start to execute. It's wired up again, and I'll, I'll drill down in to make that a little easier to look at, into another automated task where it's performing a, a test recovery action of this workload in the target cloud, again with an API call to the HCX migration appliance. It's wired up to a task that's not highlighted. This is, for, this is a task for a human to get pinged and to go do something. Go test this application, make sure this workload is working as we expected in the target cloud. And that represents reality. So in Transition Manager, you can create these workflows that have that right mixture of automation and human firewall checkpoints to make sure that things are progressing as they should, right? Um, as you'll see, I'm, I'm notifying my stakeholders here that testing is complete. Um, I'm pinging my monitoring team. Hey, you can start monitoring this workload now. It's, it's, it's in its targets. It's ready to go. And, uh, and I'm finishing up um, with another API call to clean up the data protection job that I had running earlier. So you can really get that sense of, of how we can create those, those mixed workflows with the right amount of automation uh, and human checkpoints mixed in between. So a quick summary, again, we, we aggregated our data from all of our sources of truth using our ETL script capability, and we did that really fast, right? Uh, then we showed how we can segment that big, huge environment map, right, that looks intimidating at first, but with, with saved views and tags and, and data, common data points that I'm looking for, I can start to break things down into smaller workable units and start to make progress on my transformation. We focus mostly on, on rehost candidates and, and workloads that show a low amount of complexity, that have a low amount of relationships with other applications and, and things in your environment, right? But I, I think it's also important to show how Transition Manager shines and how we deal with complex workloads, right? Um, and we do that with a feature uh, called the Dependency Analyzer. So I'll break out into that feature. So the dependency analyzer is great because based on criteria that you provide, Transition Manager will automatically place your assets into dependency groups or in new groups for you. So essentially, it's, it's, it's an automated way of, of taking your big map and creating these segments automatically for you. Uh, so for example, based on connection type, um, I can determine if this is a, a groupable criteria or not. So if I'm a cloud-first disposition, I don't really care about power. You know, maybe virtual desktop is not in uh, scope for this particular initiative. I can select that criteria, and when I hit this generate button, the end result will be this top table here. And you'll see that each one of these column, numbered columns is a dependency group or an affinity group. And it's tying all these assets together because you said that these dependency types are important and it should tie them together, and it's doing it for you. 
And the way it reads is left to right. So group one, 178 applications, uh, 218 physical servers, 908 virtual servers, right? Huge group. When you scroll out to the right, things start to get a little simpler. And you probably, you probably picked off a lot of these groups with your rehost uh, empirical way of, of breaking things down. But again, you could do it here. You can see these are the more easier uh, workloads potentially to move to, to wherever they need to go because they're not talking to a lot of things. The, the application borders are small. The blast radius is small. But for a customer that, let's say, uh, has to evacuate a data center, it's no application left behind, no server left behind. Eventually, you're going to have to slide to the left, and you're going to have to deal with, say, group number two and figure out, how am I going to take this mess and break this apart and move it into chunks? You know, I only have three people working on this weekend. I can't do, you know, 25 applications at once. Um, you know, maybe some of the workloads are, are part of, you know, critical processes that happen at a certain time of the month, and you can only do certain things at certain times. And in Transition Manager, you can do that planning visually. Oftentimes that we see when we come into some client engagements, our customers are struggling with so much data um, that they can't have this nice contained border, this contained move group to start planning from. Um, and the dependency analyzer allows you to do it visually, which is very unique. But as I mentioned before, you still have to break this apart. Uh, you, one way you can do that is with our suggested splits functionality. So if I click on the suggested splits button and I look for the orange dependency line, it's going to start suggesting to me how I can break this down into smaller pieces. So this is telling me if I take a look at this database and this application, and why are these three applications talking to the same database? If I can figure out how to manage that dependency, uh, one way to manage it might be Maybe I'll migrate the database for this application and this application to a new database server in the cloud and break away the dependency on this, and I can move that all in one group by itself. That might be one way. Another way might be, you know what, I'll leave this database in my source data center, and I'll move these three applications to the target, and we'll backhaul that connectivity from my cloud target back to my source data center. There's a m bunch of ways to, to do that, but again, you're doing it visually in Transition Manager and not trying to, to look at a voluminous tool where, you know, you're just, you're just drowning in data, right? Um, and you can keep hitting suggested splits. So I keep breaking this down further and you can start to see, okay, here we go. If I can deal with this dependency, uh, why is this server talking to this application and, and this application? If I can manage that, I can carve off this section into a smaller move group and I can start executing on it. And once you get this group down to a managed size, again, you can tag the workloads. You know, this one I, I created a, a, you know, a highly complex tag. And then you're into our workflow technology. I have a highly complex migration template with my highly complex tag associated with it. And, and, the, and then the, the cookbook feature will create the right tasks to get these uh, workloads to the destination where they need to go. Um, so let me summarize, Marguerite, I know we're running up against the time. Uh, we demonstrated data ingestion and our aggregation capability. Again, getting to that actionable data set very quickly, right? That's the biggest blocker that we see in the market today. Then we showed how we can take that big map and we can segment it. We showed you a couple ways. We did it uh, through our save view and an empirical technology, um, as well as we did it visually uh, for the complex workloads and the dependency analyzer. And then last but not least, we can actually create these templatized workflows that based on the workload tags, based on the attributes of the workloads, we can get these things moved from source to target into the cloud, um, and you can start moving the needle um, on your transformation. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Um, we're going to go ahead and take time for questions now. Just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your control panel. And it looks like we do have one here. Um, someone asked, can Transition Manager trigger automation? Yes, it can. It can do it in a couple ways. Um, I showed you earlier that it can ingest data from other systems, so think CMDB and auto discovery tools. It can, it can make an API call out to those systems and import that data into the tool, and you can do that as many times as you like to keep the data fresh. 
the other way that we trigger automation is through our runbook capability. Um, so if you're creating, let's say, a, a template to rehost Windows workloads into the cloud, you know, Windows 2012 to AWS EC2 native 2006, Windows 2016, you can build a template for that. You'll create tasks. There'll be tasks in that template that will be for humans to go do something, uh, but you can also take tasks, you can also create tasks that are associated with API endpoints, like a River Meadow tool, River Meadow tool, like a Cloud Endor, and you can go ping those endpoints and say, hey, start this data protection job. You know, give me the status of this data protection job. I'm 50% done, I'm 60% done, and weave those into your workflows, and you create this great mix of human orchestration and API automation. Great. Uh, it looks like we've answered your questions. Tom and Stephen, is there anything else you want to cover before wrapping up? No, Marguerite, I didn't have anything else. I'm just, okay. uh, if there's any follow-up questions and, and, and any um, deeper dive demonstrations, we're, we're happy to do so. If we reach out to our sales and marketing team and, and we can schedule that for you. Great. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. For a real-world example of how Transition Manager can accelerate your complex cloud or data migration, be sure to join us for a special webinar next week, Wednesday, June 12th at 1230 Eastern, featuring a roundtable discussion with Sheila Desai from Texas Mutual Insurance. We'll discuss how the IT team at Texas Mutual got a handle on their complex IT environment and accelerated their data center migration using Transition Manager. Your invitation link to register for this webcast will be included in the follow-up email you'll get for today's webinar. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you.